Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going over the microeconomics exam for 2024. This is question number two from set two. In order to do well on this question, you should be through unit five. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. This question starts off with a production function for low end feline. Low end feline can sell as many bags of cat food at $10 a piece as it can possibly make. And they can hire as many workers as they want at the market wage of $18. That means they both buy and sell into perfectly competitive markets. For part A, it tells us that low end feline has a fixed cost of $90. We have to calculate the average fixed cost if low end feline hires six workers and we have to show our work. Remember the formula of average fixed cost is the fixed cost divided by the quantity. Our fixed cost is $90, and while hiring six workers, our quantity produced is 30. Plug in those numbers and do the math. $90 of fixed cost divided by 30 units of quantity equals $3 of average fixed cost. Simply show that math and you get your first point. For part B, we are asked to calculate the marginal cost if low end feline increases output from 27 units up to 30 units, and we have to show our work. Remember the formula for the marginal cost of labor is the wage divided by the marginal product of labor. Our wage is $18 and the total produced for five workers is 27 and then changes to 30 units produced for six workers. So we can plug in those numbers and do the math. $18 worth of wage divided by the 30 units produced with six workers minus the 27 units produced with five workers. That's a marginal product of three units. And that gives us a marginal cost of labor for $6. And if you show that work, you get your next point. For part C, we are asked with the hiring of which worker will diminishing returns set in? And we have to explain using numbers. Remember, diminishing marginal returns sets in as soon as marginal product begins to fall. Marginal product, remember, is the change in the total product divided by the change in the quantity. And since the quantity on our table only changes by one, we don't have to divide by anything. So there's our marginal product calculations for the hiring of every worker. And we can see that the marginal product first begins to decrease at the hiring of the third worker. Now we can explain using numbers. Three, because the marginal product of the second worker is seven, 12 minus five, and the marginal product of the third worker is six, 18 minus 12. In order to get this point, you have to both say what the marginal product is for the second worker and the third worker, showing that it is the first time where the marginal product decreases. For part D, we have to identify the profit maximizing number of workers low and feline should hire, and we have to explain using marginal analysis. Remember, marginal analysis means we are comparing marginal costs and marginal benefits. This firm is going to hire as long as the marginal benefit, which is the marginal revenue product for their workers, is greater than or equal to the marginal cost of hiring, which is called the marginal resource cost or marginal factor cost. The best place to be is where they're equal. We'll see if they're equal on this table. First, in order to calculate the marginal revenue product, we have to find the marginal product and then multiply the marginal product by the price of $10. That gives us this column of marginal revenue product. Our wage, of course, is $18. If you look over at that table, that means we're going to hire seven workers. So go ahead and state that and explain. Seven, because the marginal revenue product of the seventh worker is $20, and that is greater than the marginal resource cost of $18. But the marginal revenue product of the eighth worker is just $10, which is less than the marginal resource cost of $18. And if you say something like that, you get your next point. For part E, we are told that in the long run, a rival company called Gato Food increases its production from 40 units of output to 50 units of output. At the same time, Gato Food's total costs increase from $600 up to $900. We are asked if Gato Foods is experiencing economies of scale, diseconomies of scale, or constant returns to scale over this range. And we have to explain using numbers. Now, this question is all about the long run average total cost curve for Gato Foods. If the long run average total cost curve is decreasing, Gato Foods is experiencing economies of scale. If the long run average total cost is increasing, on the other hand, then they are experiencing diseconomies of scale. And if the long run average total cost is constant, then they are experiencing constant returns to scale. So, to find out what the long run average total cost is doing, we simply need to calculate the average total cost at both of those quantities. So when we plug in the numbers and do the math, we see there is a $15 long run average total cost at 40 units of output. And at 50 units of output, there is an $18 long run average total cost. Since the long run average total cost increased as production increased, that means they are experiencing diseconomies of scale because the average total cost increases from $15 to $18 as production increases from 40 units to 50 units. And if you have an answer something like that, you get your last point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the 2024 microeconomics exam, question number two from set two. 
If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.